Jeremy Bowen, the BBC's Middle East editor, joins us. Hello, Jeremy. Good afternoon to you. And good afternoon to you. One of the things people are saying, those who are uh, not as convinced by the pictures as other people, is uh, that the people who are standing near the bodies are not wearing protective clothing, and then that would be a peculiar way to behave in the face of a chemical attack. Well, to start with, they probably wouldn't have any protective clothing because it's not like they've been... They're very well equipped in these places. I've been in some of these field hospitals in rebel-held parts of... Um, rebel-held parts of Damascus, and really, you you wouldn't want to be treated in some of them unless you were absolutely desperate. Some I, I went to one where they had very few medical supplies and no doctors. They just had had a couple of dentists who were trying to deal with a man who had his feet blown off. Um, so they're not they're not that well equipped. Now, I'm not an expert on chemical weapons. Um, the question is. Uh, how long, if indeed it was chemical weapons, how how long the effects of them last. There was one man uh, who was actually, he put a, a statement out on, on YouTube yesterday. He was one of the medical st- staff at one of these places saying the effects of it only last for about 30 minutes, then it disperses, but by then it's done its damage. Now, I don't know how he'd know that, and I think that's again a matter for people with real expertise like those UN inspectors to try to work out what was used. Uh, Let's go to uh, Mazin from Teesside on the phone. Hi there. Hello, Vanessa. Uh, And what about your your take on this? Do you think the time has come? Has the red line been crossed? Well, um, not really. Uh, If there was a a red line that uh, that was crossed, that was crossed a long, long time ago. But uh, I think the point that I wanted to make by coming on this programme is is uh, about how disturbed I feel about the rhetoric coming from government, be it this one or other governments, particularly Western governments. I mean, we, we have a country here that is completely dismantled now. Its infrastructure has been all but uh, uh, you know, demolished. And, and there is plenty of evidence to show that the Free Syrian Army uh, and its desperate groups have actually taken hold of some of the compounds and the storage facilities of the regime. And so what, and is, they, what, what is perturbing you? What, do you? what do you feel is being said that is not true? Well, well there is a slant. There, uh, there is an intimation and a slant that the, this attack and other atrocities are primarily committed by the Assad regime. And this is not true. Anybody going on YouTube and looking at the awful videos there will see that the vast majority of videos are all about the, the Free Syrian Army uh, committing atrocities against civilians and soldiers. And uh, comparatively, there's very, very little to show the Assad regime committing atrocities. Now, I, I, would, it, I, would, it, I would always be very wary, though, of coming to any real conclusions as a result of what you see on YouTube. I wouldn't let that be the, defi- well, well, the defining thing, Mazza. Glenn Miller and In the Mood and coming up, Poverty by the Sea. Skegness tops the list of England's most deprived coastal towns. And how much do you know about altitude sickness? This is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital radio and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at one o'clock. This is Alan Dedicote. France says the international community should respond with force if it's proved that the Syrian regime of President Assad was behind a chemical attack that's feared to have killed hundreds of people, including many children. Diplomatic efforts are being made to get UN chemical weapons inspectors who are in the capital, Damascus, to visit the site, which is just 15 minutes from where they're based. Our security correspondent Frank Gardner believes they need to move quickly. I am not optimistic that we are going to get clear answers in time from the UN inspectors on the ground. If the Syrian government, and it's, it's not proven, if they were complicit in this, if they were responsible, they are not going to take the weapons inspectors to the site of where it happened, at least not for quite some time, until enough time has elapsed that it then becomes equivocal as to who was really responsible. There are no more traces of any munitions left.